Hey, what's up, YouTube? Troy Devlin here. I'm a integrative nutrition health coach, and I specialize in weight loss. If you're new to the channel, um, thought I could take a little bit here and uh, give you a top 10 list on things we've went over so far, help to get you caught up. And uh, my goal is to help you lose 100 pounds in 100 videos. Okay, so uh, hopefully you don't have to lose 100 pounds, but um, you know, if you need to lose 20, 30 pounds, watch these videos and, uh, and I, can, I can totally get you there. If you have to lose 100 pounds, you know, let's be, let's be kind to ourselves. I can get you there in a year. So uh, in a year, I'm going to put out 100 videos. And if you watch them, boy, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to help you lose the weight. And uh, if I fail to do that, please feel free to slay me in the comments. But um, for now, I would ask that if you need to lose a little bit of weight, that you smash that subscribe button. Because uh, really, it helps me out a lot. I really get a boost. It gives me a boost to my heart when I, when I see that I uh, got a subscriber. And um, without further ado, I thought maybe we could get into this top 10 list here. Top 10 things uh, to consider when uh, undergoing a weight loss program. So number one would be macro education figure out what macronutrients are right there's certain categories of food food isn't just you know blanket statement food it's carbohydrates fats and proteins and um, so educate yourself know what you're eating and also understand how those things those specific macronutrients understand how they affect your specific body because the law of bioindividuality states that we're all different and something that might be a medicine for me could be a poison for you and so everyone needs certain uh, combinations of foods specific types of foods and specific amounts and that is all bioindividual or specific to them so um you know a, a coach can help you when it comes to education but also the internet guys just uh this is you got to learn macronutrients and then once you understand exactly what food consists of then you can manipulate your macronutrients or you can begin to you know begin to a lot of people find benefit from beginning to cut down on carbohydrates increase protein use fats mindfully so stuff like that without going down a rabbit hole guys that's number one and number one is education and um it's education on macronutrients. Learn them and then learn how to apply them to your specific uh, self. Number two, eat real food. And what that means is that something that's a, that's a plant or an animal and then that plant or animal has been harvested and now you're eating it and there's not a whole lot of steps in between the harvesting and when you're eating it. For example, if you eat a, a cookie that came in a package that cookie has it, it is so far removed from you know maybe there are some plant and animal products in that cookie but that cookie is so far removed from anything that came from the earth it's been very processed and so it's at this point it's it's what i would consider it's not real food if you went out as a forager or a hunter to look for that would you find it the answer is no you would not and i feel like um you know fake food I guess is what I would call it um, I, I really have I really feel like it's bad for your health and um, that leads us right into our next one here okay which we could call number three or it goes along with this if you eat real food then um, you avoid something that I call the white death okay and that's white sugar salt and flour they're all white so they're easily identifiable by their white color and that's why we call them the white death but the reason we call them death is because those ingredients salt sugar and flour are often added to food to make it more addictive and delicious and um, and they're unnecessary and they lead to suffering and sickness so identify those three the white death salt flour sugar cut those out you don't need them and uh, what do you need the earth provides it if it grows from the earth or if it walks you can mindfully consume that uh, and you don't find cookies growing on trees out in nature okay moving on to number four 
I guess, or maybe five. I sort of lost track. I'm kind of winging it here, but these are important. So this is portion control. You have to learn portion control if you are going to be successful with your weight loss, guys. Okay, because if you just keep doing the same thing, you're going to keep getting the same result. And maybe you know this, maybe you don't. I used to be 330 pounds. I was so fat that I was ashamed to take my shirt off. I still have like hangups with taking my shirt off because of the days when I was so overweight, right? Because I would be sensitive about my man boobs and my giant stomach, right? I would look down and I wouldn't even be able to see my feet. Okay, so it was a painful thing. And one of the ways that I was able to begin to reel that in, it took me over a year to lose those 100 pounds. But the way that I began to make, process, to make progress on that was um, learning portion control. And what I found for me, and that when I talk to people, I think that many times um, our eyes are a little bigger than our stomach, and we just feel like we need a lot more than we do. Um, you know, I've, I've worked in fitness for a long time, and uh, so working in fitness, I've learned what actual hunger feels like, right? Because I've allowed myself through experimentation with fasting and things like that, um, I've allowed myself to get in touch with that, the real feeling of hunger. And sometimes we confuse the feeling of hunger with other emotions and, um, and sometimes we just think that we need more food than we actually do to nourish our human organism. And um, so I would invite you to reframe what you think is a portion size that you need to give yourself to sustain your human body. And it's different for everyone. Like I said, bio-individuality. But, um, but I would be willing to bet that if you need to lose weight, just like I did and just like I was, I was eating way more. And, um, and I didn't realize how little I really needed uh, to get through my day and still feel great and function optimally. And, um, and what you learn about nutrition is that nutrition is about a lot more than just what's on your plate. Okay, so when you go and you walk the dog, believe it or not, that's nutrition. When you're spending time with your family and your friends, when you're engaged in creative projects, um, all of that can be thought of as nutrition. It's just as important as what's on your plate. And so, bottom line is, uh, we eat too much, and we can, and we don't need as much as we think we do. So explore that. Okay, moving on, guys. Hear me. Fruit is a powerful uh, tool in your dietary arsenal in your nutritional arsenal. Fruit is colorful, right? And as your health coach, I would advise you to eat the rainbow, and that includes fruit. But I want you to notice that that really uh, sweet taste. When you eat fruit, you should be able to detect that it's very sweet, right? So there is sugar in there. Now, if I refer you back to the white death, we would want to avoid sugar. So what's going on there? Why would, I, why would I tell you that, yeah, fruit is very healthful, yet it's full of sugar? Well, comes from the earth it is full of sugar but we just must be mindful in how we consume fruit consume it in such a way that you think about it like it's candy right maybe we'll have a piece of fruit as a dessert and I'll tell you after your evening meal you have a piece of fruit and that's a that's a wonderful metabolic optimizer I, I, I don't even I don't just because I like to do it in the evening meal I won't even say that. You have a little piece of fruit after a meal. I would recommend you don't have any naked carbs. So don't just have a piece of fruit as a snack all the time. That'll really, that will really mess you up. And that's what I'm trying to get you away from. But I also don't want you to think that fruit is the enemy. I just want you to think that fruit is candy. It's something that we have sometimes as like a dessert after we've already uh, had a, a meal like with some protein in it, something like that. Then fruit can be a good metabolic optimizer but we only should have it sometimes, maybe once a day, have a piece of fruit at a time that, uh, that feels right and nourishing for you. But don't overdo it with the fruit. It's the worst snack that you, that, that you would, <laughs> people mess themselves up like that all the time. Okay, moving on guys. I'm gonna go through a couple different types of diets um, now that people have found 
helpful, all right? There's four of them here. There's so many different. There are too many types of diets and diet combinations to get into in one video, in one day, in one week. But um, a few that we've talked about so far, okay? And I lost track. Let's see, I think I was on number five, so there's five more. This is number six. Try carb cycling. What carb cycling is, is being mindful of your carbohydrate consumption and varying it on certain days based on what you got going on and how you feel, but doing so in such a way that you reduce carbohydrate consumption overall while not restricting yourself um, from the foods that you like or from um, the benefits of consuming carbohydrate foods because they hydrate and they hydrate your uh, digestive system and they, are, they have fiber to help uh, you know move th things through your system and um, some people uh, feel uh, serotonin um, after having uh, complex carbohydrate meals so I would say that you can mindfully consume carbohydrates mindful meaning you pay attention to how you're using them and it's a good idea to vary that amount uh, day by day based on what you got going on that's carb cycling number seven intermittent fasting intermittent fasting this means that you create a window where you're not eating or fasted and you try to expand that window right because we all have a window that we're fasted where we sleep so what someone who's intermittent fasting does is is that they use the, the window that we all have when we sleep and then the intermittent fasting person will they will fast on the on the uh, front end so they'll skip breakfast right or they will stop eating at a certain time which is the one that I would recommend because it's nice to not eat too close to bedtime which is something we'll talk about in another video but intermittent fasting the the strategy behind this is we extend our fasted period that we're already going to be in when we sleep so we extend it by skipping breakfast or we extend it by skipping meals towards the end of the day you can do it either way some people will eat every other day there's so many different ways of doing it uh, i would say that you know 16 hours is probably the one that is uh, very uh, sustainable anyone can try so you would just not eat for 16 hours however you want to do it and then you would allow yourself an eight hour window of eating or you can even allow yourself maybe let's say you try that and it feels comfortable and you're like huh maybe now i feel like i'm gonna allow myself a six hour window now i'm only gonna allow myself a four hour window and, and some people have experimented with fasting uh, for a few days you know of consuming nothing but water and um you know, the idea is just uh, the invitation to explore the concept of fasting. And there are benefits. And, um, you know, without going down a rabbit hole on that, I would invite you to explore it on your own. See what you think about that. Okay, next. This is the uh, dietary approach that I would recommend. I really don't recommend restrictive diets, any type of restrictive diet. You have to measure things or you have to completely eliminate this or there's no flexibility so what I would recommend is a flexitarian approach a flexitarian approach now that Aryan where have we heard that before oh vegetarian well being a vegetarian is great and I've tried it before but what I run into is the desire to consume meat okay so I'm mindful of my meat consumption. And this is sort of the description of like what flexitarian means to me. It means that I, am, I eat a plant-based diet. So I really try to get the bulk of my nutrition from plants. But um, although I understand that when I eat meat, an animal has died and probably most likely under horrible conditions um, for me to eat that meat. And it pains me to do it. Yet, as an omnivore, I, f I have a desire to eat the meat. So I allow myself to eat the meat in a way that nourishes my body. Um, but I'm, I'm doing so mindfully and understanding that there is pain and death associated with that meat that I'm eating and sacrifice. And I feel a very deep connection to that. So I do not waste meat. I do not eat more meat than I feel like I need to. And I'm very, very thankful for it. 
understanding the consequences when I do eat it. So that's a flexitarian approach. Finally, we have a ketotarian. So we could say that this is number 10, but I also see I have a bonus. Uh, <laughs> I have a bonus feature on, um, on, the, on the list here. So this might be number nine. Either way, it really doesn't matter, but these are really important. So imagine this. I mentioned earlier in the video that many people find benefit in reducing their overall carbohydrate consumption. Um, and they use sometimes to do that carbohydrate cycling as an approach. Well, that's true. But let's say that you're reducing something. As your coach, I, I like you to crowd things out as opposed to uh, restricting yourself from things. I don't like uh, the scarcity-based mindset. There is an abundance, guys. There is an abundance that you have access to. So if we're going to reduce carbs, one of the ways we could do that is by crowding out those carbs by adding in some fats. So that brings us back to the ketotarian approach. What's that about? Well, that's an approach where, again, try to eat plant-based. So, you know, have uh, plant material be the bulk, in other words, the large portion of the meal that makes you feel full, have that be the bulk. And um, think about adding in now some fats right to maybe replace some of the let's say you're eating a, a diet that's heavy in grains or other carbohydrates like bread if you're eating a lot of pasta um, any of those processed foods crackers maybe even cut those out guys what if you replace those with plants and then you added in a bunch of fats I talked about how you mess yourself up when you snack on fruit all the time right so then if you how do we how do we crowd that out i'll tell you how to crowd that out with fats raw almonds if you can eat those or any type of nuts right uh what else a little bit of cheese something like that so that you know we could talk about dairy in another video but these are high in fat pieces of avocado and the ketotarian approach would have you focus the bulk of your meals on plants and then if you need to snack, you wouldn't be snacking on fruit, right? Maybe you could have that piece of fruit at some point mindfully in your day, or just one small one, something like that. But what you would snack on would be fat. So the nuts, some cheese, something like that. So you'd eat a lot of plants so that you could feel full. You could eat a lot of fats with that, olive oils, avocados. Um, and that would be the keto, right? So you're it's a keto, so a fat and a vegetable based, and you could eat meat in that, like I said, understand the consequences uh, and the costs associated with what you're doing, but absolutely. And um, there's one final uh, tip on here, guys. So this is either number 10 or it's a bonus tip. And um, you guys have probably heard me say this before, and this is where I started on my weight loss journey. One of the things that is very important, and if guys, you are just joining me, again, if you need to lose some weight, smash that subscribe for me. And then as soon as you do that, what I want you to do is, is never, ever, ever again, drink your calories. From this point on, never drink soda anymore. Because guys, that was the first, I was 330 pounds, right? And I was just, I thought that when I looked at my body, I didn't, I didn't think, I, I didn't like what I saw. And I didn't think that I'd ever be able to change it. But I'll tell you what I did do. I stopped drinking soda. And as soon as I stopped drinking my calories, right? And that's the, that's the uh, tip here overall is don't drink your calories. No soda, no juice. Juice, guys, will kill you. If you're trying to lose weight, you should not be drinking juice. Okay, please. But uh, don't drink your calories, guys. When I stopped drinking the soda, I lost weight like it was magic. So what do you do? Crowd it out water 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 drink so much water guys hydrate yourself and I want you to think of it this way or I would invite you to explore when you drink some water how thankful are you I think to myself of the times when I haven't had water I've lived in a dry cabin for a long period of time there have been many times in my life when I didn't have access uh, to running water and um, and when you don't have access to running water and especially if you have to go a long period without drinking boy, do you miss that water. And so we are so fortunate to have access 
to clear, nourishing water. Oh my gosh, when you drink water, I would invite you to be thankful for that water and just speak that gratitude into that water as you drink it. And, um, and wow, that's just, it's really special just thinking about it now that we have access to that. And after this video, that I can go have a drink of, of just clear, nourishing water. And guys, if you are so fortunate to have access to almost unlimited amounts of water, if you're beginning your weight loss journey now, what you need to do is, is never drink your calories again. I want you to drink water. Whenever you feel the, the thirst sensation, allow yourself that water and perhaps experience some gratitude because it is such a gift. And, um, you know, as we're on the topic of drinking water, you know, this, this could be a bonus tip or, uh, you know, you could just consider this to be drinking calories, but alcohol consumption, guys, alcohol will really, um, it'll sabotage you if you're trying to lose some weight. So if that brings you joy, you know, um, I would say maybe if you're struggling to lose weight, something has to change and that could be one of the things that's throwing you off so i would i would invite you to explore cutting out alcohol um if you're if you've been struggling to lose weight and you can't figure out why it's just not happening uh, alcohol really throws off the conditions in your body that enable that to happen so um sometimes we just have to get out of our own way so guys uh i got a little you know i guess I didn't have anything written down <laughs> for my top 10 list here today, so I, I got a little lost as to where I was. I apologize for that, and I'll try to be on track next time. But um, the advice, uh, you know, or just the pearls I put out there or whatever, just, you know, I feel like if you follow the things that we talked about in this video for the next 100 videos, right, do it for a year, and... Uh, Come back and let me know how it worked out for you. I thank you for watching the video. I ask that you like, subscribe, hit me up in the comments. Guys, if you're struggling, um, you know, I'm with you. I'm your biggest fan. And uh, you're going you're gonna to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. So uh, peace, love, and fitness, y'all. We'll uh, talk to you soon.